I caught up with Catherine Swift, who's formerly the head of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, the CFIB, and now is one of the founders of Working Canadians, where she serves as a spokesperson trying to put a pro-Canadian and pro-business mindset towards policy and politics. Now, what Working Canadians is up against is millions upon millions upon millions of dollars put into the political process by public sector unions, almost exclusively with the goal of defeating Conservatives. This is my interview with Catherine Swift in Alberta about how we push back against the rise of public sector political influence. So let's talk, Catherine, a, a little bit about one of the biggest issues we see in conservative parties that are trying to campaign and finding they're up against monumental resistance from what seems in some part of the country like the only industry that's growing, which is the public sector. How on earth can we ever break through what seems to be the trend that left-wing parties are being championed by these massive operations, massive ad campaigns? What's the answer to that? Well, I think, Andrew, we have to go broke. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be uh, too sarcastic or facetious. But part, part of uh, the evil part of me often thinks, well, maybe we'll just go broke and then people will ultimately understand uh, what, a pro what a huge problem this is. Because you're absolutely right. We've seen over the last 20 years or so in particular, provincially, federally, and even municipally, we've seen a massive escalation of participation by public sector unions, all of these third party groups that often you look at them and you think, oh, what, what is that all about? Oh, in Ontario, it's called working families. Isn't that nice? Isn't that a, you know, a nice cozy little group? Of course, it's nothing but supported by unions, you know. So often you don't even know what these entities are, but they're participating exceedingly actively, giving money, but also putting boots on the ground in many of these election campaigns. So it's not just as simple as the election rules that only permit a given group to spend, you know, X dollars, half a million bucks was the federal number uh, most recently, uh, and so on. They also do all kinds of in-kind stuff that I believe is probably at least as valuable as the actual purchased advertising they do and that kind of thing. So, it, well, the answer is none of them are easy because a lot of it has to do with things like rules around how, and you, uh, on the left, the union spending is by far the largest. Uh, it tends to be 80 to 90% of the spending in any given election over the, over the last number of years. So people say, oh, the big corporations, the big corporations aren't spending a minuscule portion of what the unions are spending. Um, so it, part of it obviously is to oppose this with groups uh, on the other side of the spectrum, and that is happening. There are a number of groups that are springing up. Um, but the, the, the reality is the unions have a flow, a massive flow of money they don't earn because Canada is a unique country in the world that permits um, the forcing of union dues. So if you're in a unionized workplace, you have to pay those dues whether or not you like how they're going to be spent. Zero financial accountability on the part of those unions as to how they're spending the dues um, and, and, and spending them politically willy-nilly. In many countries, this would be illegal. So obviously, there's a legal answer here to some extent. Uh, I don't think that's imminent because, frankly, our courts have been excessively uh, sympathetic and, and, and positive toward the participation of unions and giving unions all this power that, frankly, they don't deserve. Um, so I don't see that, unless something changes quite radically in the near future, I don't see that really as a solution. Uh, but I do think having groups presenting the other side of the story is part of the answer. Part of the answer also, though, is, is getting the information out. I think if most voters knew these are self-interested unions that basically want to pick your pocket even more than they're already picking it. Uh, they're the ones that are trying to sway your vote. Then getting that word out much more effectively than has been done to date uh, is, is a really key part of this as well. Um, of course, ultimately, the ideal would be get rid of things like forced union dues impose transparency because I think a lot of union members, if they had a clue how much of their money was being spent on partisan political activism, they would be pretty disgruntled with that and start to demand some changes. So, you know, those are just some of the solutions that I think are feasible. I don't think in the short term, though, the sort of legal side, the ultimate answer is the legal stuff that will actually constrain this kind of spending completely. Um, uh, but and and perhaps that's part, you know again if you could if you could manage to do it uh, to prevent any spending by unions or, or even corporations we we've gone a little bit to that because we now you know only permit individuals to donate to certain uh, candidates campaigns and so on but I think we could go further but again the beneficiary governments get elected are they going to enact these changes of course not because they're the ones that are benefiting from it the flip side that you hear from the unions is that they obviously have 
a reason to get involved, and that's that they're voting in their self-interest. Most people vote in their self-interest. And they say it's a free speech issue. Why shouldn't they be allowed to enter the process? So what's your answer to that? Why not just open the floodgates, let unions get involved, let corporations get involved, uh, let any group that has the resources put them towards that process? Because, uh, and I'm a big free speech advocate, so don't, don't get me wrong on that front. But in this case, they're not equal players. These are not equal players here. As I mentioned earlier, the unions have this guaranteed flow of money that, frankly, they could not lift a finger and they would still be getting billions of dollars if you add it all up across the country. It's billions of dollars every single year to spend however they choose. A corporation is not in that position. If they do something stupid, they might go out of business. They might severely see their stock price drop. They, you know, they might lose a lot of investors and on and on and on. So they're not equal players that you can apply these free speech arguments to in a fair, you know, level playing field kind of way. The other thing to look at, which I think is probably the most important one, is what is the ultimate end game for society? And given that the unions, their, their only growth source right now is government. Unions are dying in the private sector. They can't compete. They, you know, they, they were fine back in the sort of heavy industrial age and then so on and so forth. Now that globalization and, of course, technological change has really taken a bite out of their uh, bottom line, you know, you'll find the unions are moving so much toward the government side. And, of course, the ultimate impact of having uh, public sector union friendly governments in power in perpetuity is we do go bankrupt as a country. Uh, in the interim, you have we already have the, the, the reality that go a government worker makes considerably more money than the identical job in the private sector would pay. They have much better pension arrangements that, by the way, are, are, are increasingly going broke these days as the population ages. So we are paying more and more. We, we the private sector taxpayer, are paying more and more for that. So again, I think to look at what the end result is of just letting letting her rip in terms of what everybody um, you know what any group is, is spending out there you have to look at how destructive the impact of that is at least businesses do contribute to society to our tax base to the bottom line unions do not they just take the money and all the union funded groups as well because frankly when you look at where all the money's coming from it's not exclusively unions but the vast majority of it is so I think that So has to be focused on and people need to realize, yeah, free speech is one thing, hugely important, of course, but the the pernicious impact of letting this un you know unfettered uh, spending coming from this this part of the economy is so destructive to our our society and our economy ultimately as a whole that it can't be treated equally to other players in the mix. So pardon me for interrupting the um, there's a lot of gems that this, uh, this lady, Catherine Swift is talking about that many of us have been aware of it, but we've basically operated on, um, well, in ignorance of it. For years, I tried to discover how power in government is funded and enforced and this brilliant lady very concisely explains how it's done. And the money comes from unions, special interest groups. And they are the true power in this country. And let's not make any, uh, any uh, false analysis about it. Four of the five biggest spenders are organized labor unions, the top funders of third party election ads. I look at stuff like this and I agree with, with what uh, Catherine said. It should be illegal in this country uh, because you look at it in the context of like a mafia system. These people possess a great deal of wealth, power, and political influence. So, if you want to, how are you going to hold these people to account? Essentially, abolish it. Because, to me, it, it's, it's twofold. Number one, they operate on the guise of a charitable, uh, humane context. Right, they're trying to conceal their true intent by putting up stuff, putting up stuff like uh, 
we're working for climate change or we're working for our Canadian families or whatever. It's a pretense to get you to trust them right out of the gate, right? But uh, as Catherine so eloquently put, it is only a, a front, let's say, to conceal a darker intention. So you want to look at who these people want to put in power and essentially how corrupt it is. Because as she, she stated there, the union dues are completely um, impervious to, to anything. It, you, you have to pay it no matter what. It's got to be done. It's got to be paid irregardless of whether or not you accept the premise. And as I said, it does a lot of negative things to people. Number one, that takes money out of your back pocket that you yourself have earned. Another pretense to steal money from people that are, are, are working, right? And I see that everywhere. I see that in, in charitable, fake charity donation nonsense that, that picks your pocket right from your account. Um, and you have to give the permission, but I mean, you, if you're charitable and you're kind, you can fall into that trap and they'll, they'll fraud you. Like, I mean, I look at a friend of mine who suffered because they, these fraudulent charities actually draw right from her account at random times. And, um, like, I mean, when we went to the bank to, to, I, I helped her out essentially. Uh, the bank said that they couldn't do anything because these these fraudulent people were drawing at different times. So the only thing to do is close the account. It's like <laughs> you find yourself getting screwed left and right. And, and it, this is the same thing. Like you cannot choose whether or not the union can can draw out their dues. You got to pay that. That's 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 not uh, that you can't even drop out of the unions, you know, like. And as she said, um, it's you must be complicit in it. You, you, you the the money that's spent is billions and billions of dollars um, wasted uh, for these special interest nonsense. And uh, the only thing to do is make it illegal for them to operate. Um, I would have done it on general principle. Here in Calgary, the unions possess a great deal of power, and whenever I see something that needs to get done, um, you'll find that if you try to make cuts, the city council is not really preoccupied with um, how it will affect businesses, um, their own citizens. They are more concerned about how it will affect the unions because the pensions as 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 Catherine put the pensions are absolutely horrendous you talk about a triple package pension that the more money you make the more the pension benefits you in all sorts of ways it, it, it's if you knew how good the government got it you there's no other job that's more rewarding in Canada let's just say that it's it's the most pays the best the best benefits the after you retire you you'll get and the worst part is is that a lot of corrupt politicians enjoy it you know like i mean they spent their lives destroying this country and when they retire they will be able to retire in any manner in which they wish they'll be so wealthy it, it, it's it's and taxpayers of future generations as well as this one will still have to pay it and they have been doing it in the past for years and years and like it, it is literally a license to steal money it, it's it's pathetic um i would ban it i'd outlaw it these people would have far less legitimacy than they have now I tell you. Um, but I really enjoyed the speech because uh, she she seems to be 
intimately knowledgeable about uh, how the unions operate and of course the special interests which they fuel and that can go very that can create very deep corruption of course because you can you can pay like she talked about having uh, foot soldiers on the ground they could pay people to go out and rally and so on and against conservatism and literally color them any way they wish uh, similar to what happened to Maxime but uh, you know that that was uh, that was surprising to be a conservative <laughs> underlying with uh, Kinsella but anyway take away their power essentially make it illegal for them to make it a compulsory fee compulsory union dues take away their money take away their power essentially um, the unions I don't care what anybody says but I've known it for years the unions are the new mafia they're like extremely powerful um, when I look at Rachel Notley how she gained political support in this province you'll find that her husband is actually a high high executive union person on a well let's just say he's got a great deal of power and influence and money and when I look at how somebody like Rachel Notley before she was premier I never even heard of her um, that that kind of power can get somebody elected to the premier of, of a great province that's power I tell you this is not something that you, you should just brush under the rug and, and say oh no it's nothing no it's it's a great power Ontario government workers make what was it that that just that happened there a moment ago I looked at it here Ontario government workers making 10.6 percent more than the private sector like open your eyes and see it's it's way way out of balance it's it's so out of balance you know if people knew as 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 Catherine said if people knew how their money was being spent they may be more reluctant to pay that and um, to be honest the unions on the surface are designed to protect the workers but um, you know in this day and age there's no accountability for how powerful they've become and there must be there has to be some accountability a lot more accountability than what they're doing these people are illegally rallying support for the parties of their choosing and suppressing those parties in which they don't choose right there are laws that prevent uh, corporate from doing the same thing but the, the you know it's like you block the way for one one way for for criminality to happen and you leave the door wide open the, the back door wide open for other more serious criminals to to make their way you know what i mean you fortified the gate against people who actually would help <laughs> and open the gates wide for the people who are actually a legitimate threat it's the greatest hypocrisy I ever heard but for years many of us are, are, are familiar with it I even know here in Alberta that the NDP had the union workers th there's letters that come in your mailbox eh, to encourage you if not force you to put your vote to the NDP while Rachel Notley was in power and this is all union people eh? They're union workers. Vote for the NDP. You know, completely, it should be illegal. But they do it. And their jobs are, are at a threat. And I'm not kidding about that. I've seen it happen. The power of the unions is not in question. That is a serious and severe power and a corrupt power at that. And something has to be done. When Catherine was talking about just just make it illegal for them to enforce the union dues. If you wish to pay, so be it. If you don't wish to pay, then you know that's that's you know that's your choice. It should be a conscious choice between the workers. And um, 
never underestimate how big their war chest is. Let's say that as well. Uh, billions and billions of dollars. We probably will never know how much money was spent and wasted. But to me, the greatest crime of all is stealing the money from those people that work hard for it. Because they do work hard and they should be allowed to keep the money that they earn. Rather than kicking it back to unions and kicking it back to Ottawa and carbon tax and all these other stupid taxes that, that, that keep getting levied against common people and taking away any legitimate way they can save money. Money earned is that belongs to the person that earned it, essentially, at the end of the day. I'm sick and tired of hearing this in Canada. All the money has to be kicked here to kick there. Everybody's got their hands out trying to, to steal a buck. More than that, actually, trying to steal 90% of what you earn. Canada seems to be backwards in its execution of, of, uh, of fairness. You know? It's The more I look at it, uh, the more I'm appalled by, by the conditions in which uh, we have made legal um, for criminality here to, to thrive and grow. It's, it's disheartening. Many of my viewers, I know you, you, you work hard, whatever you're doing, I'm sure you work very hard to achieve a good living and a good standard of life for yourselves. And you deserve to reap the rewards of that hard work. Not put it here, put it there, and, and, and watch the money disappear from your hands even though you didn't spend it. The Americans addressed the same issue. Under Obama, unions gained a great deal of power. And Clinton as well. And Trump saw it. Like him or hate him, Trump saw it. And delegitimized it. Right? He cares more about putting money in the pockets of his own workers. He wants people to work. But not just, just to work so you can collect taxes. No. So they have prosperity. Which is what we lack here. I don't care what anybody says. The current governing conditions. The, the way that our, our, our unions operate. It cannot continue. As Catherine said. If you sustain that in perpetuity. The unions will eventually bankrupt us. And it's happened. Right? Look at Greece. The whole country, most of the country living on, on, uh, on uh, social welfare. You know? When the bureaucracy gets out of hand, it's terrible. The private sector creates the jobs. Right? It just, it deeply upsets me because this country should be great. It should be, and it's not. There's nothing that, that, that we can do except try to elect leaders who are more responsible and force what action needs to be implemented in order to make things more fair, more balanced, right? I appreciate uh, your time and your attention, and uh, thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel if, uh, if you find uh, my content uh, moving or if you agree with me. I very much appreciate your support. Bye-bye.